Your doctor might use complex terminology to describe arthritis of the spine. By the end of this video, you'll be able to understand the language they use and be able to differentiate between different conditions. Let's start with a quick anatomy review. The spine is split into four different parts. The C-spine or cervical spine, the T-spine or thoracic spine, the L-spine or lumbar spine, and the S-spine or the sacral spine. I'm going to rotate the model and look from above. So you can see how the spinal cord is located in the center of the entire vertebral column. This opening is called the vertebral foramen or vertebral canal. We have to know two rules. Number one, motor and sensory. Number two, cushioning cartilage and arthritis. Number one, the brain communicates with the body through the spinal cord. This includes all motor movement and sensation from our environment. Let's pretend you want to move your arm. Within milliseconds, your brain sends a signal down the spinal cord to that specific body part allowing it to move. This is called motor function. In the same way, if you touch a hot pan, the skin nerves sense the heat, which sends a signal up to the brain, allowing you to move your hand away before you burn yourself. This is called sensation or sensory function. Number two, there's two areas of the spine that cushion it, allowing it for healthy movement. The intervertebral disc between the vertebrae and the facet joints. Facet joints are these fibrous capsules located on the back of the spine. When we age, similar to knee or hip arthritis, we get wear and tear of the cartilage that cushions the end of bones eventually leads to bone spur formation and narrowing of the joint spaces. In the spine, this includes both the intervertebral discs and the facet joints. This combination is called degenerative disc disease because the wear and tear over the years eventually leads to bone spur formation and narrowing of the joint spaces, which can cause compression of nerves. Vertebral disc degeneration causes it to become unstable, which can cause a slipped disc or spondylolisthesis. It can also lead to a bulging disc or even disc herniation where the inner core can leak out to the outer portion of the disc. Arthritis of the vertebral cartilage that can cause narrowing here in the spinal canal is called spinal stenosis. Arthritis of the facet joints here is called spondylosis. Welcome back to the channel everyone, I'm your host Dr. Nav. If you guys are learning something new, don't forget to give this a huge thumbs up and please smash that subscribe button, it really helps our family grow. Thank you. Here's a great side view of both the vertebral disc and the facet joints because arthritic at the same time leading to nerve root compression right next to the spinal canal are the nerve roots that branch off from the spinal cord compression of these nerve roots up against the vertebra or bone is called radiculopathy this pinching of the nerves at the root leads to motor and sensory issues down the entire nerve and in the case of the L5 S1 region the nerve root irritation and compression here can cause issues down the nerve and meet this guy here the sciatic nerve which can feel like an electric shock or or pain going down the entire leg, as well as causing numbness and or weakness in the back, buttocks, leg, or foot. 